Welcome back, America. You state, or certainly imply, Professor Ellis, that there needs to be some kind of oversight. There needs to be something that is done because these entities have completely unraveled and they've spun out of control and they're basically radical left-wing indoctrination mills. And so we're raising generations of young people who hate their family, who hate America, who hate American is uh, history, who hate Israel, who are becoming racist with critical race theory and all these other ideologies that the Marxists and the Islamists are pouring into their books, into their teachings, into their lectures and seminars, and that's going on without any counterpoint of views. Don't you think it's necessary that the state legislatures, which spend the most money on these colleges and universities, as well as the federal government, student loans, other grants, and so forth and so on, have an obligation, as they would with any other industry, to ensure that the monies are spent properly, that they aren't going to radicalism, for the purpose of undermining and destroying our own nation? Can't Congress or these state legislatures at least make an effort to get their hands around what's taking place? What do you think of that? Well, no, you're right. The state legislatures is one of the places that, where you might expect some activity. There, there is some activity going on in a few states, North Carolina, Florida, um, but not enough. By, uh, and even in uh, red states where there's large Republican majorities, uh, like Idaho, there's not much going on. There, there ought to be a lot more going on. But basically what people need to grasp is that money is being given to these campuses for the purpose of education, and that money is being taken by radicals and used for something completely different. So, you know, they're, they're hired to do a certain job. They want to do a completely different job. Well, that's, that's embezzlement. I mean, they're taking money on false pretenses. What the job they want to do is to complete their, their project of uh, completely transforming the country so that it's in their image, their radical political image. Although, I mean, what that would amount to now, God only knows, because everyone knows that Marxist countries don't work. Uh, but I think basically the, the main motive force of those campus radicals is to break down this society that's their first goal. I mean, I, I don't think they know what they're, they're really tr trying to achieve in terms of the, the end goal. Uh, but um, I, I think that if state legislatures were to wake up to the fact that something is happening that's fraudulent, the money's being used for a purpose that it was not given for, then they could simply get in there, put in new administrators. I mean, it's easy enough for a state legislature to say, we are insisting on a new president of the campus as a condition of continued funding. And once that new president's in, the legislature should lean on him and tell him that anyone who's in a classroom who's using that money, the money he's paid as a professor, to do, to do instead the work of political activism, political recruiting for his favorite political cause, that person should be taken out of that classroom. Uh, tenure shouldn't protect someone who is hired to do one job but does something that, that is not authorized. That's, that, that's, that's in, in a sense, that's not doing the job you're paid to do. Legislatures could easily say that. But uh, the problem we have, I think, is that public attitudes are lagging behind reality. I mean, an awful lot of people have fond memories of their time on college campuses. You know, they think 30 years ago, they had a wonderful time as an undergraduate at Harvard or Princeton. And they just find it very difficult to believe that these institutions could have deteriorated so much. And I find even talking to Republicans sometimes, some, uh, people look to me and say, I, I just can't believe what you're saying to me. And I, I always respond, well, I don't blame you for not believing it. It is almost incredible the degree to which these places have, have gone bad, in fact. But what we ought to do is be more public relations on, on this issue. I mean, the public has got to be brought up to speed. Let me make a few suggestions here. Number one, parents need to take a very uh, direct responsibility in where they send their kids to school. 
They're not required to send them to these schools, no matter whether they're called Ivy League or not. Number two, um, corporations need to stop supporting these universities as well. They have their stadiums named after them, so forth. They need to cut off the funds. Number three, it's good to see big donors cutting off their donors to these universities. All donors who believe in this country ought to cut off donors, uh, donations to these universities. Number four, there ought to be lawsuits brought against these universities for the misspending and misapplication of funds by the very students and their parents who send their kids there. They're not getting educated. They're getting indoctrinated. There are a lot of things that can be done that are not being done, that must be done. And as you point out, there's a particular focus by these radicals in the education departments, on the journalism departments, on the behavioral sciences departments, because these are the areas that have the most influence on the rest of the public. Professor Ellis, I cannot thank you enough. He's written this great book, I don't remind you, The Breakdown of Higher Education. I cannot encourage you strongly enough to get a copy of this book and read his great piece in the Wall Street Journal, Higher Ed Has Become a Threat to America. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for having me. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.